Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will and all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Now let us go to God with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your son, Jesus, dying on the cross so that we may have a right to the tree of life. Father, as we go through this day, we ask that you will continue to bless us as we go along life's Christian journey. Give us the wisdom that we need to do, rightly divide your word, Heavenly Father, and to live as your children as you would have us to live. Pray that we will be examples to the world, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you bless the leadership that you have given us, Heavenly Father. Pray that we will be wise enough to heed their counsel as they study your word and, and shepherd us in the way that you would have them lead us. Father, we thank you for this change within the country. We pray that we won't forget what you have done for us in the prayers that we ask and that we will be better Christian citizens in helping do our part in the world, Heavenly Father. We ask that you be with those that are incarcerated, Heavenly Father. We know that you will supply them their every need. Also the, the homeless, Heavenly Father, and the, the motherless and the widows, Heavenly Father. These are the blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name, amen.
the splendor of a king, oh, crowned in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great! saints of God, good morning, people of God. Once again, God has blessed us to be alive in the land of the living. And for this, we are truly grateful unto him. It's Sunday morning. It's worship time. And I pray that you are in the spirit this morning, that you are open and receptive this morning to hear a word from the Lord. Today's message comes from a very, perhaps one of the most, perhaps the most popular chapter in the Old Testament, Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23, even church people, um, I'm sorry, even non-church people are familiar um, with uh, this, uh, this beautiful uh, chapter of the Bible. We're going to come from Psalms 23 this morning, talking about walking with the shepherd, walking with the shepherd. Everyone loves Psalm 23, but the writer David lived in a world of green pastures 
and still waters. Do you all remember that? He lived in a time of green pastures and still, still waters. Now, contrast that with the pulsating world of materialism, hate, and division in which we live. David's world seems millions of miles away from ours. And yet, if ever there was a time we needed to rediscover the astounding truths of this Psalms, surely that time is right now. For who will deny that many today are experiencing an intense sense of personal need and hollowness? So many have been impacted by the pandemic. So many have faced financial setbacks. So many have witnessed, um, uh, many of us, all of us watched TV a few weeks ago and witnessed um, a partisan insurrection on our Capitol building. We live under a system where while during this COVID pandemic, regular people lost, lost, lost. And at the same time, millionaires became billionaires and billionaires became trillionaires. What kind of system is this that we are living under? Uh, here, even close to home here in Florida where we are, the vaccine for COVID, we have the vaccine now and it's even being distributed unfairly. This is the time, these are the times we are living in. These are not green pastures and these are not steel waters. Ours is a time when people are afraid, terrified of life, and even more afraid of death. If ever we needed direction from an all-powerful shepherd, we sure need it now. Here in the 23rd Psalm, we can find respite, relief, and restoration. Here we find a shepherd that we can walk with and trust, walk with and gain understanding, walk with and find grace, walk with and find uh, and receive blessings unimaginable, walk with like none other that we could possibly walk with. This morning, walking with the shepherd, walking with the shepherd. Psalm 23 is more than a lovely piece of religious poetry. It is a timeless and timely reminder of the adequacy of God for all who walk with him. Just three wisdom nuggets from uh, this chapter this morning, all from verse number three. Psalm 23, verse Number three, three wisdom nuggets to help us during this time of inadequacy. A message from someone who is very adequate to help us with our needs. Number one, uh, he restores my soul. Oh, he restores my soul. Let's learn. Let's learn soul here. Uh, in the Hebrew is the term uh, nephesh. The term literally means my being or it's it's who I am. My soul is who I am. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 28 tells us it's that part of man that man cannot kill. That part that man cannot kill. Somebody wrote a song and said the soul never dies. That soul that never that never dies. And then it says my soul is restored. The word restores here, saying God restores my soul. The basic word restores, that, that verb, that verb is that action word. It indicates a movement back to a point of departure. Restore here means a movement back to a point of departure. In other words, when God wind, wind us, wound us up and sent us off into the world, we were birthed and born. We were at a point where God wanted us to be. And when our soul needs restoring, it means we have moved away from that point 
of the we've departed from that point of optimum um, um, joy and love and peace and kindness and heavenly manner that God where God programmed us. We moved away from there. It's a movement back to that point of departure. That's what restores is. What 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 is David admitting here? David is saying when he says restores my soul, I need my soul restored. He's admitting there is in his soul a beauty that sometimes looks uh, disfigured. He's admitting there is in his soul a goodness that is sometimes not good. He's admitting that in his soul sometimes a, there is a wholeness that is just not whole. He's admitting that there is in his soul a place where sin sometimes comes in and sets up shop and takes a hold of him. Oh, how, how is a soul restored? Psalms chapter 19 and verse number seven, the same writer gives us an indication when he says the law of Jehovah is perfect, restoring the soul. Psalms 19 and 7, he says, the law of Jehovah is perfect. Perfect how? In restoring the soul. The Hebrew term for law is Torah. This word Torah indicates God's instructions and God's regulations for life. The word perfect in the text reflects that which is without blemish, complete, characterized by integrity and truth. In other words, God's word is for restoring his instructions, his regulation for life are for restoring and they are perfect. There is no imperfection in the word of God. Um, um, the word uh, uh, here is, gives us indication that a generous application of God's word to our lives on a consistent basis does wonders for restoring our mental stability. Did you get that? Let me say that again. A generous application of God's word to our lives on a consistent basis does wonders for restoring our mental stability. You see, there, there are certain things that only the original manufacturer can repair. There are some things, some problems, some situations, some deviations, uh, some moving from the point of departure that only an original manufacturer uh, is able to repair. Uh, illustratively, Toyota does not have Range Rover parts. Birkin will not be able to repair your purse from Target. Are y'all understanding me? And only God can restore a soul that has moved out of place. Oh, there are some things that only the original manufacturer can repair. There's some things that only God can repair. I don't care how many suit sales you go to. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how many promotions you receive, how many trips you have, how many new houses you buy, how many new cars you drive how many pairs of, of shoes you have. There are some things in every entity that only the original manufacturer is able to bring restoration. Oh, moving on, and not only does he restore my soul, he leads me in the paths of righteousness. He restores my soul, but he also leads me in the paths of righteousness. Oh, we all understand the metaphor of a shepherd leading sheep the right way, leading them the correct way. A shepherd leading his sheep to uh, green pastures for feeding, leading them by still waters so they can drink the refreshing waters that they need. He's a good shepherd. And we understand this metaphor. And if you understand that metaphor, then you must also understand that when the sheep, when the, when the shepherd leads, the sheep follow. And when the sheep follow the shepherd, 
They are walking in paths of righteousness. The shepherd knows where to go. The shepherd knows what time of the year to feed in what part of the pasture. He knows the dangerous places. He knows the, where the predators are. He knows where the water is still. He knows what he's doing. And good sheep, righteous sheep, shall I say, will follow the righteous path when they are following the good, the good shepherd. Oh, we must understand that from our own personal perspective, that we are to follow the righteous path. And we follow the righteous path when we follow a perfect shepherd. Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 28 reads like this. In the way of righteousness, there is life along that path is immortality. And then Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 32, continuing this theme of righteousness. The Bible says, for John came to you to show you the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Second Peter chapter two and verse number 21 said, it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to reject the command they were given to live a holy life. Oh, we're commanded to live a holy life. How are we commanded to live this holy righteous life? We are commanded to live it by following paths of righteousness. The sheep don't have to know the way. All they have to do is follow the shepherd. The sheep don't have to know where the enemies are. All they have to do is follow the shepherd. The sheep don't have to know where the next promotion is coming from, where the husband or the wife is coming from, uh, who are their enemies at their place of employment, how long they should stay at that place of employment. They don't have to be experts in finances. What sheep must be an expert in is following paths of righteousness, and they follow paths of righteousness when sheep follow the path of the shepherd. Oh, uh, not only uh, does uh, he restore my soul, not only does he lead me in the path of righteousness, but then the third point in this verse number three says he does it for his name's sake. Oh, did you get that? He does it for his name's sake. Oh, oh, I need to tell on the Lord here for just a minute. You see, the shepherd has an ulterior motive. May I say that again? Oh, the shepherd has an ulterior motive. There's motivation behind the shepherd leading in the right path and, and, and wanting the sheep to follow the paths of righteousness. Verse 3 <clears throat> says, For my name's sake. Oh, he leads us in the path of righteousness. He restores our soul for his name's sake. Understand that word name there. That word name there means reputation. God's reputation. Here, he restores me. He leads me for the sake of his reputation. Oh, I told you God had a motive here. God is concerned about his reputation. He's concerned about his glorification repeatedly. The Psalms instruct us to live uh, for God's namesake. In Psalms chapter 23, God guides us for his namesake. Psalms 25, God forgives us of our sins for his namesake. Psalms chapter 79, God delivers us from sin for his namesake. Psalms chapter 109, God deals with us out of his goodness for his namesake. And then Psalm chapter 143, God lets us live for his namesake. The very reason I'm still alive is for God's namesake. The reason I have not 
fallen um, uncontrollably is for God's name's sake. The reason we're still alive and not dead because of God's name's sake. The reason we are not ruined uh, is because of God's name's sake. Shepherd's motive. God does what he does for his sake. Shepherds don't like to lose sheep. How can you be a good shepherd if you lose all of your sheep? God is concerned about his reputation. You see, uh, uh, sheep were expected to produce a profit for the shepherd. That's the reason for leading sheep. That's the reason for nurturing sheep. That's the reason for being a shepherd in order to have a flock that is a profit to uh, the shepherd. The shepherd took care of the sheep, not for necessarily the profit of the sheep, but for the shepherd's needs. Oh, the shepherd has a motive. Have you ever bragged on your children? Parents, have you ever bragged on your children? Well, God wants to brag on his sheep for his name's sake. He wants to say to a watching world, oh, John found himself in a tempting situation, but John stayed faithful. Oh, Mary has a difficult and challenging supervisor, but she always stays faithful. Sister Sue is a single mom with financial challenges, but, but she stays faithful. God wants to be able to say, uh, those are my sheep. Those are my children. Those are my followers. They go through stuff on a daily basis. They go through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, where the where the enemy is, but still they stay faithful. Yes, yes, they stay they stay faithful. Oh, do you stay faithful? Can God say that you stay faithful? Oh, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, and He does it because of His reputation. Oh, God has to keep his reputation up. You see, he's restoring my soul for his reputation. He, he, he's, he's leading me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Walking with the shepherd. Are you still walking with the shepherd? As we are looking like we're beginning to enter the end of this present pandemic. Can you be found guilty of walking with the shepherd? When you walk with the shepherd, you find paths of righteousness. I pray that this word was helpful to you this morning, this Lord's day. And it is our prayer that God will continue to bless you, people of God, and that he will bless you exceedingly well. A stranger, a beggar I be As here I go travel alone And the dearest of friends They won't listen to me And they dog me for trusting in God's son This world in its folly It's sin and it's shame Neglectful it turns me away my savior and praise his sweet name you see he hears everything that i say i know somebody's listening and he hears every word that i say yes i know somebody answers every prayer that i seek loves me ain't gonna never never gonna turn me away it's jesus the savior of mount calvary and he is everything that i say for
Never gonna tell me away, no. 